What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Entitled People, Crazy People, and Everything in Between. Hope you're all doing awesome today, make sure to subscribe for more and let's get right into it. Is a mugshot a valid form of ID? I really just had someone try to use a mugshot as a form of ID. So I worked night audit at a hotel and came in for my shift at 11pm. When I got here, there was a sketchy looking guy sitting on an outdoor bench right outside the lobby. I asked second shift if they were a guest or not, and they told me no and that he had been out there for a while saying he's waiting on someone. I thought, well, as long as he's outside and not bothering me or any of our guests, then who cares? About an hour into my shift, he's still out there and decides to come in and sit in the lobby. I say, may I help you with something, sir? And the sketchball says, just waiting on someone, they should be here any second, I hope it's not an issue. As long as you really are leaving soon or planning on getting a room. I technically am not allowed to have non-guests loitering around the lobby. Oh, okay, well, how much is a room here? 135 before tax is our cheapest rate. Oh, wow, that much? Thanks anyways, I should be leaving soon. He then continues to sit in the lobby for about a half hour before he gets up and leaves. Or at least so I thought. About another hour passes and I notice he was outside sitting on the bench again. I was annoyed but also didn't want to deal with him, so I just let him be. But he then comes inside to sit in the lobby and at this point I'm ready to kick him out. I tell him that unless he is getting a room here he needs to leave, or the police will be called. He says, okay wait, let me see if my card will go through. I'll try and get a room because I don't know when they're coming to pick me up. I tell him that I'll need to see an ID as well and he says, crap, I don't have one. But I do have a mugshot, can I just use that? Yeah, sure. We love to rent out rooms to people who only have mugshots on them to prove who they are. It took everything in me to not laugh in his face, but I just kept my composure and said, Sorry sir, we do not. We would need to see an official form of ID or else I can't rent a room to you. He freezes up and doesn't know what to say, and blinks his eyes rapidly almost like he was doing an internal system reset, and couldn't process the fact that I wasn't going to let him rent a room without an ID. Once the blinking is over and he comes back to earth, it's now all my fault that he doesn't have an ID and starts calling me every name in the book. Without responding to him and with him still right there in front of me pissed off, I picked up the phone and dialed the local police station. As I started to talk to the operator and explain the situation, the sketchball picked up on what I was doing and yelled one last f you before walking out the door. Man who doesn't understand refunds calls police on cashier, me, for theft. I, a 20-year-old female, have been working at a local Chinese takeout for the past year. It's a pretty slow evening on my 5 to 11.30 p.m. shift when a man calls to place a delivery order. All is going well until I inform him our standard delivery time, 45 minutes to an hour. Well, he will not have this. Cancel my order, too long, says the man. Sure thing, says myself being sure to remind him that since he had us charge him for his delivery ahead of time, it will be a couple business days before it actually reflects on his account. This is where all hell breaks loose. The man does not simply demand his money, but screams through the phone that he will be down immediately and that we will be handing him money from the register. He hangs up as I mentally prepare for his assumed arrival. He arrives 15 to 30 minutes after our friendly chat and is still just as friendly. He again demands his money, so I attempt one last time to explain that his money is indeed on its way to his account, but to no avail. In earshot of all our waiting customers, the man dials 911 to quote, report a theft at so-and-so Chinese takeout. Of course, the cops speed over. We sit very close to the local police station, and the man gets to them first, so I let them chat. The cop then comes to me, explaining he knows the issue now, and doesn't need further assistance. I see him go over to the man once more. Some words are exchanged and out the door the man goes. No register money in tow, thankfully. Not too dramatic of an ending, but the kicker? Cop comes back to me one last time to say, You wouldn't believe how many grown adults don't understand how refunds work. To you, Mr. Officer, I believe you. The man has yet to be seen or heard from again, and this was approximately six months ago. Victory. Photo shoe greater than air ambulance. This happened a few years ago, but I had to share this here. For background, I worked for a state park in a small mountain town. 
The entrance road of the park went through a beautiful open meadow, and this meadow was used as an emergency helicopter landing zone for the surrounding community. One day at the end of summer, there was a motorcycle crash nearby, and the rider needed to be airlifted to the nearest trauma center, so a life flight was sent in to land at the park. I was blocking off traffic on the main road and radioing ground support to coordinate the landing. As the helicopter is landing on the field and the patient is being transported into the helicopter, a random woman comes up to me. Excuse me, do you know how much longer this is going to take? We have a photo shoot planned over in that patch of sun in the meadow and it's golden hour. I just looked at her and said, I don't know, and redirected her elsewhere. I didn't even know what to say, because I wanted to say, what is wrong with you? Someone is in critical condition and you're worried it's inconveniencing your photo shoot? I still think about it to this day, the casual audacity. Private driveway being used as public roadway. I purchased 30 acres of land and built a house several years back in central Florida, had a driveway installed that cuts across the center of my property, allowing me to exit on either of the two main roads. I now have traffic using my driveway as a shortcut between the two roads, up to and including 18-wheelers and other large vehicles, since using my driveway cuts off nearly half an hour of travel time between two cities. I installed pillars and gates on both ends of the driveway and marked it private property, but the gates were torn down and the pillars knocked over. I have contacted the county about it and they sent out a guy from Code Compliance who looked around for a few minutes and left. I have now received a notice about not keeping the roadway to state standards, and that the county will be out to perform maintenance bringing the roadway up to standards, i.e. widening it and repaving, which I will personally be responsible for paying for. I've told them if they want it to be a public road, then fine, buy me out and I'll move elsewhere, but they have refused to do so. As of right now, I have removed half the driveway past my house, and put up signs and markers stating Dead End Road, and now the county is threatening to have me arrested for destruction of public property. Before anyone asks, no, there are no easements on this property anywhere near the area the driveway goes through, and no easements in any form that travel in that direction on the property. Closest thing is a power company easement along the southern edge of the land. The county has basically turned my private property into public land, without using eminent domain and without any compensation. I'm getting in contact with lawyers in the AM and installing cameras. Thank you all for the advice. Update. Raised hell with the county commissioner for my district. Showed them video and threatened to lawyer up. He pulled in the director for the road and bridge department, then pulled in the director of zoning and planning. My driveway is no longer a road, and I am no longer being assessed for repairs, and I am legally allowed to do what is necessary to stop traffic from crossing my property. So both sides of the property have been ditched and bermed, and a steel pole gate across the side I plan on keeping open. Sheriff's Department has been out multiple times dealing with people trying to enter the property, but they are starting to get the hint that the road is closed. We are currently in negotiations for a portion of my property to be purchased and turned into a road, but not 10 feet from my house. There is a county commissioner's meeting next Tuesday and it is on the docket to be brought up. My driveway is no longer on Google Maps as a road. Signage posted private property, no trespassing, dead end road, etc. Several people are angry about it as they are used to the pass-through, but with the cameras I have installed, I have been able to get clear images of vehicles and license plates of the worst offenders, and they will be cited according to the Sheriff's Department. I have contacted Amazon and UPS about their trucks crossing my property. UPS has instructed their drivers to no longer use that route, haven't heard a thing back from Amazon yet, but I have stopped two of their trucks so far, both of which were ticketed by the sheriff's department and the one needing a tow to get pulled off the berm it got stuck on. Thank you all for the suggestions, hopefully this will soon be all over and I can get on with my life. Final update. I sold a 60 foot wide stretch of my property to the county. They will be installing a two lane road along it this spring. The county has repaired the damage to my land caused by the vehicles driving over it, by grading and sodding around my house in the worst areas, and installing a paved drive across where my old gravel drive was. I now have a ditch across the edge of my property along both roadways, with guardrails installed by the county, and rather large I-beam mounted motorized industrial gates on both ends of the driveway. The county has promised in writing to install a ditch and guardrail along the border of the new road when it is installed. 
I still get people attempting to enter the gates and cross the property from time to time, but much less often now. The vast majority of them being commuter vehicles, no commercial trucks. USPS no longer attempts to cross here, but I still have seen Amazon trucks drive up, stop and then move on down the road without attempting to enter the property. I am no longer on Google Maps as a public roadway. All in all, I am satisfied with the outcome. My boss said I did great with this interaction with a rude customer. So I work at a coffee shop and I have to wear a mask because I'm allergic to peppermint. I didn't know it was this severe until after I got the job, and I get questions and comments on my wearing a mask pretty frequently. But the other day this one guy was being pretty rude about it. Normally someone will ask and I will just say, oh, just a precaution? And most people will leave it at that and let me get on with my day. This guy, though, kept making comments and asking somewhat invasive medical questions throughout his entire order. Really long one, too. And even after I had told him that his order would be done on the other side of the counter. I finally had it. And when he said, You know COVID is over, right? I'm not going to kill you by breathing near you. In a pretty sarcastic tone, I just said, Okay, thanks. But I think I'll keep it on because I have a deadly medical condition and I think I'd prefer to stay alive for a while. To which he responded, I Is it contagious? I looked him dead in the eye and replied, Maybe, I don't know. Do you want me to take it off and see if you get it? He kind of just walked off. I am pretty proud of myself because I'm not very good at comebacks. I warned potential new tenants for my old flat from three years previous how bad the landlady is when they ring the door entry system, which is still connected to my mobile phone. How to sum up this one. I rented a property about four years ago for one year. The landlady was a nightmare. She never fixed anything, left her car on the drive, etc. One thing she didn't sort out was the door entry system. Basically, the group of five properties share a common entry gate. The five homeowners never paid the installers, so unsurprisingly, the installers are a little bit unhappy. I move in, find the manufacturers since it's written on the gate, find the installers, tell them that I am nothing to do with the owners, just a tenant who wants to let deliveries and family in. They inform me that their installation bill hasn't been paid, and they won't change the contact number to my phone. This system rings your mobile phone. It's not a fixed hardware line to a handset in the house. I plead my case. I'm just a tenant, etc., etc. After a few weeks of ringing them every day and being super polite, they find pity as I'm not involved in the outstanding bill, relent, and change the system. Three years after I moved out, I'm still connected to the entry system for the old place I rented. When someone rings, if it's anybody, I let them in, apart from deliveries to the landlady. I know her name. And if it's a potential new tenant, they only stay for one year as she's a nightmare. I now tell them what a bad landlady she is. Buyer beware. And then let them in. And that is all for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. So take care and I'll see you next time.